Hi, thank you so much for coming on In Contact. I mean, I am so excited to have you. I want to hear about even when you start, because you know how important it is for women, black women, to be in politics. Talk to me about that. Oh, yes. When I ran for office back in 2015, there were 18% of women in office. And the statistics for black women were so much less. Why in the state house, where there are 54% women in the state, are we underrepresented was the question that I asked. Mm -hmm. So when I ran for office, I brought black women with me. Mm -hmm. When I went to the Democratic National Convention, I said we have to trust black women. Mm -hmm. That means we need leadership like Maxine Waters. Mm -hmm. We need leadership that brings black women to the table. Mm -hmm. Oh my goodness, because I'm telling you right now, especially so much that's going on with politics right now, health issues, let's talk about that a lot because I think that people think of politics as something so scary, not knowing if you're not involved, you can't help to make things change, even if it's in your best interest. Yes, when it comes to public health issues in the state of Georgia, we can make changes at the micro level. Mm -hmm. That means if you work at a hospital, look at your policies. Mm -hmm. That means if you work at a clinic, Think about what happens to your health insurance with the changes at the government level. And that means if you want to run for office, center those public health policies. And that's what I did. The woman's right to choose, HIV laws, things that relate to the criminalization of you if you have HIV even, mm -hmm. were the issues I was focusing on. The Zika virus, getting a study committee on how we bring together environmental departments and public health departments mm -hmm. to move us forward. Oh my goodness. Being a part of the LGBTQ community, a strong community, being able to represent not only a black woman, but also as queer. Talk to me about that. Oh my goodness. My community, my wonderful rainbow family, as I call us, we are so multifaceted. We look at issues from a perspective that is about family at the end of the day. Sometimes we have chosen families. Mm -hmm. Sometimes we have biological families. But as we go through that, we're deep in the process of it. So the reason of people saying, well, you really can't get married, for some people that isn't the issue. Right. It's that the person who I choose to love and to nurture and care for the rest of my life, mm -hmm. I'm not able to visit them in a hospital when they're sick. And that is ultimately why people move forward in getting married. Mm -hmm. But as we look at the disparities for our community, the HIV rates are through the wall. Mm -hmm. The CDC last year, they have not retracted this statement, has said that one out of two black gay men in the state of Georgia will contract HIV. We have to do something about that. That means that like the policy we just got enacted on Monday, May 16th, to change the way that the public health department for the state of Georgia does prevention work, says we have to give information on PrEP and PEP so people cannot contract or transmit HIV in the LGBTQ community. That's awesome. Thank that you. awesome. <laughs> oh, you're so young. I mean, people are like, oh my goodness, she's so young. There's so much more for you to do. What's your plans? What, what, is, the, what is the challenges, the things that you feel like this has to be done? Um, these are some of the, the, the projects I need to work on. What's next for you, being that you are so young? Yes. Well, the first thing that I've been thinking about is black female representation in Southern politics and queer representation in politics. So there are some PACs, mm -hmm. political action committees across the country. We have a black PAC mm -hmm. that helps to get women elected, but what about a queer PAC? Right. So I'm looking into a Q PAC mm -hmm. coming up. The second thing that I'm really focusing on is the job in which I have been elected to. Looking at how we change policies, not just from a legislative standpoint, so that it has my name on it and it goes into the law books, but so that we are working at innovative levels. We're working with our de public health departments. We're working with our social security departments to look at what those nooks and crannies are that are really marginalizing people of color in the South. And then the third thing, of course, is looking to the future generations. I know that women and young people right now are becoming politicized oh, yeah. in a time of 45. Oh, yeah. I became politicized during the time of President Obama. Mm -hmm. I was hopeful, I was inspired, mm -hmm. I was excited. And today, our youth are not feeling that. So I know the resistance from the youth is gonna be strong. Mm -hmm. They're gonna stand up and they're gonna talk about the policies that affected them when they were children. Mm -hmm. What would you tell 
a young woman or you tell yourself if you could look right now back at part Park at 17, 18, 19, 21, because you were what, 22 or 23 when you were even running. So what would you tell them to help inspire them? Because you said they're not motivated. What would you say to them to, to basically be an inspiration? Well, we're a part of a technological society. We have Twitter, Facebook, Snapchat, all of these applications that bring you forth and tell your story. I think we need to start crafting that at a younger age. Instead of just tweeting something that is an attack on someone, talk about the policy that affects you. Talk about why that is hurtful in your neighborhood. Instead of just using hashtags and our wonderful meme minds to create gifts that are funny, what about if we create those that are powerful, that show what's happening in our community? We have the opportunity these days to delete the things that we do on social media. Mm -hmm. Facebook tells you every year, this is what you did. Mm -hmm. Every month, this is what you did in years past. Mm -hmm. Edit it or delete it now because you might not want that to follow you politically going forward. Not to say something is wrong with it, but craft your message from a young age on the internet is what I would give as a piece of advice to someone young who's trying to come up in the political world. What do you want to be remembered as? Oh my goodness. It's all done and said. Well, I'll say this. I am not afraid of becoming proximate to the White House. So oh. let's go. Let's go. Mm hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you, Paul. You're welcome. Thank you, Lador. See ya. Thank you, and we'll be back.